The Su-152 is a Soviet self-propelled heavy howitzer used during World War II. It mounted a 152mm gun howitzer on the chassis of a KV-1 heavy tank. Later production used an IS tank chassis and was redesignated ISU-152. The Stalingrad counteroffensive, Operation Uranus, exposed the Red Army's urgent need for mobile heavy guns to destroy German fortifications. At the time Soviet frontline ground units did not possess sufficient firepower to deal with pillboxes and other fortifications. Close support of artillery and combat engineers was an important factor in the success of Operation Uranus. However, with rare exceptions, Soviet guns and howitzers at this time were towed rather than self-propelled. This lack of mobility was exacerbated by the absence of roads, the presence of deep snow and a scarcity of artillery tractors. Towed guns were also vulnerable to counterattack while moving, especially since they were often hauled by horses or their crews. The 152mm heavy howitzers were particularly difficult to maneuver owing to their great weight. They were incapable of crossing rivers on anything but tank bridges and were prone to being abandoned after becoming mired. In November 1942, the State Defense Committee therefore ordered the development of a heavy self-propelled gun with a 152mm ML-20 howitzer. The assembly of the first prototype began on December 31, 1942. It was completed after 25 days. Plant trials on January 25, 1943. A. After a number of successful plant tests the more stringent state tests began. On February 14, 1943 the State Defense Committee accepted it for Red Army service and immediately launched it into mass production at the Chelyabinsk Kirov plant. The muzzle velocity and external ballistics were identical to the original towed ML-20 gun. Although designed with no consideration for the anti-tank role, the Su-152 proved to have surprisingly good anti-tank capabilities due to the main gun's extremely heavy high explosive projectiles. Purpose-built anti-tank guns of the period usually relied on small, high-velocity solid projectiles, optimized for punching through armor. Since the Su-152, like all Su-series self-propelled guns was not designed with tank killing in mind, no AP projectiles were issued to crews and no initial tests against armor were conducted. However, tests performed on captured Tiger tanks in early 1943 showed that the Su-152 was able to destroy them at any range with some reliability by dislodging the turret through blast effect. This discovery spurred massive Su-152 production and the formation of self-propelled artillery units, which then functioned as heavy tank destroyer battalions. The Su-152 was produced in large numbers throughout 1943, with the first Su-152s being issued to new heavy mechanized gun regiments raised in May 1943. The first regiment arrived at Kursk with only 12 guns, and was brought up to its full strength of 21 guns during the fighting. Disadvantages of the vehicle included a low rate of fire due to the heavy ammunition, low ammunition storage and a cramped and unergonomic crew compartment. Its armor protection was only adequate, the 65mm of 30 degree sloped frontal armor still left it vulnerable frontally to the guns of the Tiger and Ferdinand at long range and the 7.5cm high velocity gun of the Panzer IV at medium and short ranges and from any range from the flanks or rear. This made it most effective for use against entrenched enemies, where the German heavy tanks' advantages could be nullified and the Su-152s could utilize their one-shot kill potential. Since it was intended as a self-propelled artillery piece rather than a true tank destroyer, the Su-152 was generally issued with standard high explosive rounds rather than armor-piercing projectiles. The 152mm round produced a massive blast that did not rely on velocity for its effectiveness, making it effective against any German tank, including the Tiger and Elephant. It was capable of dislodging the turret of a Tiger tank at any range, and numerous German armored fighting vehicles were claimed destroyed or damaged by Su-152s during the Battle of Kursk. However, it proved less reliable at permanently destroying the Ferdinand heavy tank destroyer, 
whose bulkier, simplified design was more resistant to non-penetrating blast. While the Russians knocked out at least seven German Ferdinands in Su-152 ambushes at Kursk during one operation, German after-action engineers were able to repair, recrew and return nearly all to battle the next day. This has been attributed to the gun's blast killing the crew and destroying the vehicle's interior via concussion and spalling without harming the ammunition supply or chassis. Soviet Su-152 crews were ordered to continue firing at incapacitated tanks until their turrets were knocked off, but the Ferdinand did not have a turret. After Kursk, the 152mm solid core AP round was produced in small numbers and issued to heavy tank destroyer battalions as a penetrating projectile, but the gun's low velocity made the AP round no more accurate and only moderately more effective than the standard round which could also be used against infantry. After Kursk, the Su-152 played an important role in destroying German fortifications during the Operation Bagration Offensive, this being the vehicle's original design goal. From the second half of 1943 to the end of the war the Su-152s were used on all Soviet fronts, from Finland to the Crimea. Due to combat losses and mass production ceasing in December 1943, the number of Su-152s in the Soviet army decreased. Eventually SU-152s were replaced by the more reliable and better armored ISU-152, which used the same armament and ammunition in the same dual-purpose role. As a heavy assault gun, the ISU-152 was an extremely valuable weapon in urban combat operations such as the Battle of Berlin, Budapest, and Königsberg. The vehicle's excellent armor protection finally provided the 152mm gun with good protection from most German anti-tank guns, allowing it to advance into the face of direct anti-tank fire, while the huge, low-velocity, high-explosive rounds were excellent at blasting open even the most heavily fortified and reinforced enemy strongpoints. Such actions would be much more dangerous and much less effective for a conventional towed artillery piece with their high crew exposure and low mobility, or even a tank, with their smaller main guns. When supporting tanks, the usual tactics of the ISU-152 were to be used in the second line of the attack order, 100 to 200 meters behind the attacking tanks, which were usually IS tanks with equal mobility. The ISU-152, like the earlier SU-152 and contemporary ISU-122, was employed by independent heavy self-propelled artillery regiments. Between May 1943 and 1945, 53 of these regiments were formed. Many of them were reformed tank regiments, and employed similar direct fire tactics as used by tanks when supporting infantry. Each of the heavy regiment had 21 guns, divided into four artillery batteries of five vehicles and the commander's vehicle. For support, these heavy regiments had some supplementary unarmored vehicles such as trucks, jeeps, or motorcycles. In December 1944, Guard's heavy self-propelled artillery brigades were formed, to provide heavy fire support to the tank armies. They were organized along the model of tank brigades, each with 65 ISU-152 or ISU-122 self-propelled guns. To minimize the risks of being knocked out by Panzerfaust-equipped units during urban operations, the ISU-152 usually acted in one or two vehicle detachments alongside infantry squads for protection. The infantry squad would include a specialist sniper or at least a sharpshooter, some submachine gunners and sometimes a flamethrower. The ISU-152's heavy caliber machine gun was also useful for targeting Panzerfaust gunners hiding on upper floors of city buildings or behind protective cover and defensive barricades. Effective teamwork between the ISU-152 crew and supporting infantry allowed them to achieve their goals with minimal losses, but if such tactics were not adhered to, the attacking vehicles were easily attacked and destroyed usually through the weaker armor on the roof or rear compartment. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.